Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Second Unitarian Church. My name is Claire Gervasi. My pronouns are they, them, and I am a board member of the Board of Trustees here at our church. Today we are in person at the at, we are in person at the Admiral on the Lake, the Two U Sanctuary here, and continuing to meet virtually via Zoom. We ask everyone's indulgence for the complications of a three-part service. We're glad you are here, whichever way you are attending. If you're in the sanctuary and would benefit from hearing assistance, we have devices available. Please see our tech team in the back. I'm also gonna ask that um, if you see an extra seat next to you and you're able to scooch toward the middle, that would be appreciated, just because we're a little tight on seats today in case anybody comes in in a few minutes. We wanna make it easy for them to sit. Thank you. Uh, we're seeing uh, currently both a national and global surge in COVID numbers. So we encourage people to wear masks during the service. This practice prevents transmission of the virus and helps us center the needs of those who are most vulnerable. We especially welcome newcomers and visitors this morning. Finding a new community and making new connections can be challenging. Please know that we're excited to have you and look forward to getting to know you. If you're new to us today, please note that in the Zoom chat or mention it in person during conversation after the service. If you would like, there are blue mugs you can use to signal to others that you would like them to come up and say hello. We also always need people in the kitchen after coffee hour, and that's a great place to see old friends and make new ones. Our worship today is led by the musicians of Second Unitarian Church, along with Don McGregor as worship associate. Music is provided by the 2U Choir, the 2U Band, Thais Breslovsky, and Director of Music, Carl Kennedy. Our time together requires a large group of people who make possible the worship, the music, and the technical production. They are listed in our order of service, and we thank them for their ongoing service to our congregation. I have a couple of announcements that are particular to this morning, the most exciting of which is that we have our annual cookie sale after service in the sanctuary. Um, this is a great opportunity to get lots of delicious things to eat and also raise money for the church. Our goal is to make $1,000. There's at least $1,000 worth of cookies back there, so I think this is very attainable. The more you buy, the better we do, plus then you get more cookies. Um, and there are cookies to meet every dietary need back there, I think. So I'm, I'm excited to explore the plethora of goodies we have. Uh, tomorrow, at the Admiral, we will gather to write holiday cards to Unitarian Universalists incarcerated in Illinois. We need all hands to come together for this gathering. If you wanna bring a snack to share, that would be welcome. This is always a fun time and also gives us the opportunity to connect with those who may be particularly lonely during this holiday season. We have many holiday services coming up over the next couple weeks. One I would like to highlight is our blue Christmas service. This is an intentionally somber service as the holiday time is not always joyous for everyone. This service will be on Wednesday the 20th at 7 p.m. Please share with friends who may benefit from this space. I now welcome Don to lead us in our call to worship. We are a Unitarian Universalist congregation, a community of children, youth, and adults, a people of many beliefs and traditions, bound not by the specific things we believe, but the values we share. Whether you are joining us for the first time, for the thousandth time, you are welcome here. Whether you believe in God some of the time, all of the time, or none of the time, you are welcome here. Whatever your race, whomever you love, whichever which way you move in the world, however much money is in your pocket, you are welcome here. I invite you now 
as you feel ready to take a breath in and out. As the music begins, let us enter into our service together. Thank you, choir. 
In just a moment, Escher here in the sanctuary and Harris at the Admiral will light our chalices, the symbol of our faith. And we light our chalices this morning with these words from Marnie Singer. The chalice is the container, the space where the musicians and the listeners gather. The oil is the fuel, the hours of practice and the life experiences of everyone in the room. The wick is the instruments and vocal cords through which the music will flow. And the flame the flame is the music which is created as if by magic. When the instruments are lifted, the breath is inhaled and the downbeat is knotted. May this flame ignite the music within us all. Our opening hymn this morning is number 389 in the gray hymnal, this is gathered here. We will sing this once in unison, and then we will start it as a two-part round with the congregation singing the first part and the choir singing the second part, a job that they are just learning about for the first time right now. <laughs> so we will sing this once in unison and then split into a round. Mm -hmm. Gathered here. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit drawn near congregation. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour. Gathered here in the struggle and the power. Spirit draw near. Gathered here the mystery of the hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit drawn And as they say in commercials, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Please join me in reciting our covenant. The words are in your order of service and on the screen. We covenant to build a community that challenges us to grow and empowers us to honor the truth within ourselves. We will be generous with our gifts and honest in our communication holding faithful that love that embraces both diversity and conflict. Called by our living tradition, we will nurture spirituality within a vision of the eternal, living out our inner convictions through struggles for justice and acts of compassion. But wait, there's more. Now please join me in singing our congregational hymn, number 123, Spirit of Life. And let's rise, why not?
Great. I'd like to invite all the children at Children at Heart up to the front. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. All right. Everybody, please gather around in front of me or next to me. Okay. So today is a very special day for two reasons. The first reason is that we're right in the middle of Hanukkah right now. Stop. Which is a, a Jewish holiday um, that celebrates a festival of lights and honors the rededication of the Jewish temple. Today is also super special because it's Music Sunday. We get to sing and listen to gorgeous music. So we're going to talk about something kind of special to Hanukkah. Then we're going to talk a little bit about music and then put it all together. I need everyone to back up like at least six inches. I need a little room. OK, thank you. <laughs> OK, so first of all, hold on, hold on. OK, so Zella just identified these for us. That was going to be my question. What are these? They're dreidels. I celebrate Hanukkah. Awesome. So, Zella, can you show everybody how to spin a dreidel? And Noah, you can spin that one. Yep. So you guys can pass around the dreidel and take turns spinning it while I talk a little bit. So dreidel is a really popular game during Hanukkah. You'll probably be able to see better if you're down there, Malachi. They do, yes. Um, so it's a really popular game during Hanukkah, and there are a few theories about how the game of dreidel kind of came to be. And one theory is that in ancient Greece, when Jewish people were being persecuted and told that they couldn't read the Torah, the, Jew, the Jewish holy book, they would study the Torah in hiding. And then when someone approached, they would pull out the dreidel and, pay, and play with it. And today, it's a game that's played really commonly during Hanukkah. There happens to be a fun song about the dreidel. And since it's Music Sunday, we're going to have a brief little music lesson before we get into the song. Yeah, yeah, I love Who knows what, what these are? What are these? You can just call them out. Yes, yes, you got it, Marion. You got it, Lumi. You got it, Zella. They're musical notes. Zella, are you able to, what kind of note? This is a quarter. Uh huh. This yes. Is a dotted half note. Yes, that's a dotted half note. Absolutely, Noah. Good job, Zella and Noah. The dotted half note, you could also call a three quarters note. It's half note, it's a half note plus half of itself, so another quarter. So we're gonna clap, starting with the quarter note. Just one clap for the quarter note. I'll demonstrate and then you'll repeat after me. My turn. Note. Your turn. Go. Now the half note is twice that long, so ready? My, hold on, my turn. Note, your turn. Note. Now the dotted half note, also known as the three quarters note, ready? My turn. Note, your turn. And, oh, thank you. And last but not least, the whole note, that's the longest one, we're gonna do four claps. My turn. Note, your turn. Beautiful, they nailed it. All right, so now we're gonna sing the dreidel song. Grown-ups, you can look at it on the screen or know it from memory because you don't have the music in front of you. Kids, I'm going to give you each music. Those of you that can read, lead the way. Those of you learning to read or not reading yet, just do your best to follow along. That's okay. Just do your very best to follow along. And here you go. All right. Yep. Here you go. Okay. All right, and Carl is going to help me get started. Oh, oh sorry. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. Okay, ready? Yep. I have a little dreidel. I made it out of clay. And when it's dry and ready, then dreidel I shall play. Oh, dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. Oh, dreidel, 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 then dreidel I shall play. And I think that's good. <laughs> I think that's good. It has two more verses, but I think we can pause there. All right. Kids, you did a great job learning about the dreidel, reading that music, and enjoying that song. 
And we'll have a couple of dreidels and pieces to play with the dreidels out at the hot chocolate social after the service. So hopefully you'll all be there. And you're going to be there. Wonderful. And that is the first and last time that you will hear me sing with the mic turned on. So I hope you all enjoyed it. All right, let's sing the children to their classes. Thank you. 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 So fun. So each year, and you hear me say this week after week, but we make a commitment, a pledge to support the ministry of our beloved congregation. In addition to this pledge that we make every year, we take a collection each Sunday so that we can share with those who are doing justice work beyond our walls. In just a moment, you'll see a number on your screen, but there's also a number in your order of service where you can text and follow the prompts and make your contributions. For the month of December, we do something a little bit different than the rest of the months. And in this month, we share our plate with the minister's discretionary fund. This isn't just a really fun way to give me more money, which you're certainly welcome to do. We're all enjoying that together. Um, but that is not the point of the Minister's Discretionary Fund. The, the very important role that this resource plays in our community is to ensure that I have the resources to enable people who are struggling to take care of their basic needs. I shared a little bit about a person in our, connected to our community last week who I got permission to share his story. I got permission to share another person's story as well. And it's really important to engage in consent with stories like these, that we shouldn't be telling other people's stories without their permission. So it was really important to me that I got their permission before telling you a little bit about them. So this is a person who's connected to our community who a few months ago fell on some really hard times, ended up being pushed out of her home and has been living on the streets for a number of months. This person is struggling with uh, court cases, ongoing things, struggling to get a job, trying really hard to get everything together and get themselves back on their feet. And they're really struggling to do so. And they have some support, some very amazing support from within our congregation. They have some support from family, but it's just not quite enough to take care of what they need to take care of to make sure they have the resources to get themselves to court. Because it is expensive to take the L if you're taking it day after day after day to get where you need to go. It's expensive to pay for food, especially when you don't have somewhere to cook it. It's expensive to get warm things when you're cold outside and you need things to take care of your body. Living is expensive. And so it's really vital that I am able to be equipped with tools that you give me year after year. And we collect, at times, thousands of dollars that are able to be distributed to people, sometimes at amounts of $50 here and there. Sometimes it's larger amounts. I'll tell you another story next week about some, why we might pay a significantly larger contribution for somebody. But this is all made possible because of you. And this is something that I think is really important for religious communities to be able to do because there's so many restrictions on getting access to financial support and that there's often uh, strings attached to the things that people get. And you give me the tools to give strings free cash to people who need it. And that is a blessing. And I'm so, so grateful that you made that possible. And so Don will lead you in our offertory words, but I too just want to add that please give as generously as you can. Now, please join me in reading our offertory words, the words are printed in your order of service 
and are on the screen. This church is a community of ourselves. Its energy and resources are our energy and resources. Its wealth is what we share. As we contribute to the life of this community, we enable its participation in the larger world around us. The offering will now be generously given and gratefully received. now, wherever it is that you are, here in the sanctuary, gathered at the Admiral, maybe you're at home or walking along the lake, wherever it is that you are, please join me in the spirit of prayer and meditation. Let's begin by grounding our body in our breath. As you breathe in and out, try relaxing the muscles in your shoulders. Release that tension in your neck. Unclench your beautiful jaw. And just breathe into this space, this time. We begin always in thanks. Thankful for the breath in our lungs, the beauty of our earth and the strength of this, our beloved community. We hold in our hearts those who care for family and ill health, those who live with grief or chronic pain, those struggling with addiction, or illness, seen and unseen, we are with you. For parents and teachers and all those whose primary spiritual practice is caring for children, we are with you. Pray for our neighbors in prison, for those who are struggling to stay afloat in the midst of poverty, we are with you. Pray for all those living in harm's way, particularly those navigating gun violence in our city. Pray for our planet and commit to work that will lead us away from the harms of climate chaos. As war continues, we pray that wisdom, compassion, and empathy guide the leaders of our world. May they and we be instruments of a just and lasting peace. Our lives are truly blessed by those who knowingly, with curiosity and courage, face their final days. Into this, our shared silence across space, I invite you now to speak aloud any names you wish to lift up into the loving support of this community. With our deepest compassion, let us hold in our hearts those named and unnamed, those remembered, 
and those forgotten. Let it be so. Amen and blessed be. During our ritual of lighting candles for joys and concerns, we want to do our best to maintain our safety with each other. In the To You Sanctuary, you are invited in a moment to come forward and then light a candle of joy, celebration, concern, or sorrow. And as you end your time of contemplation and candle lighting, I want to invite you to use the hand sanitizer that we are running out of, but is here. For those at the Admiral, I invite you to come forward and take a pebble from one bowl, hold it tightly in your hand, putting your energy into that stone and then knowing your joys and sorrows to be shared by this community, let it go lightly into the other bowl. For those of us on Zoom, please join by sharing your joys and concerns in our chat window. And I will light a candle here to represent your celebrations and sorrows. come forward.
behold, all of these are shared joys, celebrations, concerns, and sorrows close to our hearts. Good morning. My name is Carl Kennedy. My pronouns are he and him. And I'm proud to serve as director of music at Second Unitarian Church of Chicago. This morning's music service will go on a journey exploring the mystery and mysticism of the beginning of life, the end of life, the passage of time and season, and the inexplicable interconnectedness of the universe. It is a magical time of year for many of the spiritual, spiritual traditions that we hold dear. We honor the ancient miracle of Hanukkah, the pagan festival of Yule, preparing for the darkness that comes with the closing of another year, and the Christian advent anticipating a new beginning. You will hear music from our band and our choir, demonstrating the pluralism present in our faith both in spiritual ideas and in musical style. Our next piece comes from, is this correct? What's the next piece? Great, okay, I'm correct. <laughs> I don't have an order of service here and I started second guessing things. Great. Joey, can we uh, cut that? Thanks, all right. continuity, folks. Our next piece comes from the Christian tradition. I would like to preface it with a poem, Waiting for Now, by Maddie McGlynn. Everything is about to change, and it already has. It will be, it was, it is. The dawn you eagerly await, the end, the long, cold darkness, is already full sun, far off, in the east. Yet even that light's return, spring is months away. Thirty long years pass after his birth, before the Messiah comes. Stones of justice have been tossed in the lake, but the ripples have not yet arrived, have not resolved into the kingdom and kingdom already present among us. While we wait, let us seek in the darkness of the now and the not yet. For the treasures God has hidden there, the riches and the secret, the riches of the secret places, only found by night. This is what is promised us. The wheel of life turns ever on. The darkness is a path to joy. Please enjoy. Norton Lordson's Omanium Mysterium.
Our first reading this morning is an excerpt from Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by Neil deGrasse Tyson. What we do know and what we can assert without further hesitation is that the universe had a beginning. The universe continues to evolve. And yes, every one of our body's atoms is traceable to the Big Bang and to the thermonuclear furnaces within high mass stars that exploded more than five billion years ago. We are stardust brought to life, then empowered by the universe to figure itself out. And we have only just begun. Pulse of life enters my 
Our second reading is Winter Blessing by Catherine McTeague. The world catches our hearts through light, splint, light, splintering dance sun on water, calm moonlight poured through branches, candle lit in early winter evenings, a splatter of stars on a clear night, and the bright eyes of those we love. But the brilliance never ends even when the light goes out. Mystery shimmers and shimmers and shines in the world in even the darkest corners. It's where the roots push life into soil and rocks, in small lives lived under every stone. There in the silent pulse beneath the tree bark, it's in the depths of slow tides as they turn, there in the sky on moonless nights where muffling clouds block out the stars. It's there in the prison, in the hospital, by the hospice bed, there at the graveyard and at the empty house, something beating in dark shelters of our heart, the small shine of hope the guilt edge of kindness. May we be granted the gift of deeper sight that we might see with or without light. It's gone. 
We began this morning with the mystery of new life, and our closing song explores the mystery of what happens at one's life's end. Our relationship with a particular piece of music can change over time, uh, and this song and this song is a personal example of that for me. One year ago, my grandmother passed away. Though she was a deeply kind person, we never developed a very close relationship. She lived with severe aphasia from a, straight, from a stroke she suffered much earlier in life. And in the 20 years since my grandfather died, uh, she did not leave Iowa City in order to maintain security in the familiar and in the routines. For her memorial, I happily offered to help with the music and was presented with this song by my aunt. Towards the end of her life, my grandmother spoke frequently uh, about being comfortable with not knowing what comes next, um, that all being despite the former wife of a lifelong Lutheran minister. So my Aunt Cynthia um, sent this song thinking it, it, it represented those feelings quite well. At first listen, I, I got the point, but musically, <laughs> it just wasn't really my vibe. Yet, in the process of preparing this, the music, and pre in preparing the music uh, for that whole service, so all the music, that was meant to represent different aspects of her and represent different aspects of my grandmother's life, Doing that gave me the opportunity to connect and understand her in a deeper way than I did when she was alive. Some of, her, some of you have heard me say that when you give yourself to the music, it will give back. My wife Patty and I closed the memorial service with this song, and now I love every bit of its wit and country twang, <laughs> and I turn it up whenever it comes up on my playlist. This is Iris Dements, Let the Mystery Be. Some say they're going to a place 
called glory and I ain't saying it ain't a fact. But I've heard that I'm on the road to purgatory and I don't like the sound of that. Well, I believe in love and I live my life accordingly. But I choose to let the mystery be. Everybody's wondering what and where they all came from. And everybody's worrying about where they're gonna go when the whole thing's done. But no one knows for certain, and so it's all the same to me. I think I'll just let the mystery be. I think I'll just let the mystery be. Now, and now for something completely different. Please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing our closing hymn. This is hymn number 108, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. Thank you. 
microphone. I love a microphone. Can we just take a moment, please, both choir, band, and everybody else gathered here to celebrate our amazing director of music, Carl Kahn. You offer so much to our church. You transform our worship week after week. Our faith is transformed by you as well on a national level. You are directing music for Unitarian Universalists here in Chicago and everywhere. And we are blessed for it. Thank you. Now please buy every cookie that is out there.